Okay, so this is the review of the Minimen 640G system versus the Veo in terms of the accuracy of the CGM, the number of lambs received by each, and also what I was required to do. So I set up the Minimen 640G and the Veo both at the same time, and ran them and had the same settings in terms of the low alert set at 3.5 and the predictive alert set um, on the Veo at 20 minutes out, which is what I usually had. And obviously the, the 640G had the suspended before low of the smart guard on without the alarms on. Um, so we'll, we'll see how, how that went. So this is Monday. You can see... So this Monday, you can see on the top, this is the Veo, and you can see, I'll just explain the format of the report. So on the top of the Veo, you have um, the grey band across the middle, which is good, well, the glucose over centre between 3.5 and 9 millimoles. And then along the bottom is where the basal is. Um, and then in the middle, you can see that the carb amount. So the Veo just ran the, the CGN and obviously all the instant doses in the 640G, which is the bottom part. Where the little black boxes with the white dot in the middle is, is where the Veo would have alarmed. So you can see starting from midnight, there are a lot of low predictive alarms there, and then an actual low alert when it dipped down. And again, at about half past two in the morning, there's another couple of low alerts. And then throughout the day, there are a lot of predicted low alerts again. So before having the 640G, I would have had to respond to each one of those and make a decision that to either put a temporary basal on, maybe have some extra carbs, or certainly watch my diet, watch my glucose levels closely to make sure I didn't go hypo. So that's 28 times the alarm would have gone off during that time. Whereas you can see on the bottom for the 640G, the only times that actually alarm sound is the little bells on the top. So the bells on the bottom, where you can see there are two little ones, those actually didn't alarm at that point. It's only the alarms at the very top and the little bells that go off. You can see there's only five alarms there. And you can see the little blue snippets out of the basal on the bottom and um, are where the, the suspend before those kicked in. So you can see between about half past one or half past midnight and half past one it's suspended to prevent a hypo. And then again at about half past four or half past five. You can see at 10 o'clock in the morning, although it's suspended, it didn't actually prevent the hypo there. And I'll talk about that now is that I actually over for the snacks that I had um, at nine o'clock in the morning so when there's no bolus anything going in suspending the basal isn't as effective so that's one time that the smart guide didn't work but you can see later on in that day around about half past six onwards is where i did the exercise and the suspended four locating again there to really help me so the big difference there really is um 28 alarms versus five alarms and the only times i really got alarms was on the high numbers where i uh, got the cap counting wrong at lunch time you can see the glucose level rose to 12 and 13 but actually on the high post side i only had one alarm that day where i really need to step in and um, where i have a bolus okay so moving into tuesday we have a similar picture across the top the bail alarms went off quite a few times during the night, so I'd silence these alarms to get a full night's sleep, but if I was wearing the veil as I had previously, I'd have had to get up at um, half past twelve, again at two, and then again at four o'clock in the morning, and then you can see it went off a few times later on, again about half past two. So there's nine alarms there, which you can see with the 640G, actually the only five alarms, and again, um, the only time that it, it was just then before low kitchen overnight, so I've got a full night's sleep. The only time that um, it wasn't effective is you can see after lunch, where I over at lunch time, the extra bolus in there that shouldn't have been in there um, was too much, so even suspending the basil didn't work. But again, I only had one alarm where I really needed to step in and take some action. The other times, you can see where the blue snippets are, the suspended before low has actually prevented me from having those hypos. Okay, so looking at Wednesday, we've got a similar picture overnight again, um, where I've got woke up roughly around 6 o'clock in the morning, and um, actually there's a suspend before low about 2 o'clock in the morning on the bottom one, um, that actually prevented the hypo. You can see, as I discussed, where we had the sensor failure at about 12 o'clock on the 640G, and that is because in the new Guardian link, there is an algorithm that if the sensor starts performing poorly, it picks that up and feeds it back and tells you to change the sensor. So that could be positive in that actually I didn't carry on getting wildly out readings 
Um, but obviously, that's something I have to keep an eye on as we move along, because that's sort of just the first sense we've had with it, and see whether, because really the sensors need to last longer than three and a half days, we'll, we'll test with this next one to see if it lasts six days. And again, later on in the evening, you can see all the low predictive alerts on the top from the bail that would have had that day. I mean, 23 alarms, not to drive anyone bonkers. Um, on the, the bottom, you can see at 10 o'clock at night, again, the suspend before low kicked in with no alarms. So again, the, the difference in terms of my interaction that I have to take to prevent the high post has been significantly reduced. Okay, so for Thursday is a bit of a recurring theme. You can see, obviously, I've been woken up quite a few times with the VAO, and again, later on in the afternoon, um, obviously, a bit of a pattern on the bottom around about lunchtime of all the bullets again, where I've actually had to step in and treat the hypo. The smart guard's not been possible to do it, but again, that's only one interaction per day, whereas the, the smart guard is managing the hypos other than that. So, yeah, pretty effective again. And then finally on Friday, again, a massive, if that would have been me with the veil overnight there, I would have had hardly any sleep. I would have been up all night sticking biscuits down my neck, whereas you can see on the bottom, the 640G suspended and restarted the basil, and again, woke up with a good BG in the morning. It managed it again. Um, this is the difference, as you can see, around about 6 o'clock, I had a big bolus and then a couple of small boluses. And you can see around about 10 o'clock as the um, centre line is drifting down and that suspend before low has kicked in. Because the bolus was a good sort of three hours ago, actually stop, stopping the basil at that point was effective in preventing the high post. That was a big thing. Um, I, I think I, I had a cannula problem around about lunchtime, hence going up to 15, 16. Either that or I just didn't get my cow counting wrong. I got my cow counting wrong, so rather than worry, wonder which one it was, I changed over my set and then re -bolus. I had a bit of problems of recalibrating around about lunchtime, but then once it got it sorted again at 8 o'clock at night, it carried on quite well. So, yeah, and again, high post prevented overnight and a full night's sleep. So, in summary, for the veil, for, for five days, I had literally 18 CGM alarms per day, and 14 of those were predicted lows or low alerts. And before I had the 640G, what I was doing on a daily basis is probably losing two hours sleep. And I was then having to manage these predicted lows by either putting on 10 basils, having extra carbs, or just keeping an eye on it to see whether I want to drop or not. So you can imagine that's obviously a big part of my life that has been spent managing and to keep in good control, but only doing it by having to make lots of interactions. The mean average difference from the finger pricks to the sensor was 13%, which is really good for the veil. Um, so, yeah, just as I said, the veil is excellent in terms of the predicted alarms can and allow you to prevent the hypos, and you always have to fall back on the low glucose suspend, but it does require a lot of interaction, and that's the same for any of the continuous glucose monitoring systems out there. They rely on alerting you, and then you've got to make a decision, which, okay, if you're like me, and you're quite OCD with diabetes, and you know exactly what to do, but for a lot of people, that's more information than they want or need, therefore it sometimes is, is not as useful, um, unless you're, you're really on it. So in summary for the 640G, I mean, I get five alarms per day, but key thing, only one was for hitting a low level, the other ones were for highs or for calibrations that I forgot to do. So for me, it's the first full week sleep I've had in four years, so I'm actually feeling brilliant about that, and that is such a difference that actually now I can confidently go to sleep and allow this smart guy to kick in and, and cut out. And looking back, that's three and a half hypos per day that it's actually prevented without requiring my attention. So all those extra biscuits, all those 10 basils, all those thinking about what I'm doing, it's actually reduced the, the effect that diabetes has on my life. The mean average difference was 15%, so very similar to the VAO, good, good quality there. And I would say in my summary that SmartGuard works best at preventing high pose, definitely overnight where it's amazing, where actually you've only got basal insulin going and it can cause the high pose, so suspending and restarting is at its premium there. It works well if you've just slightly over bolus, so about three hours after your bolus, if it's just a little bit too much has gone in, the stock in the basil can then actually prevent the hypo there. And obviously if you're doing exercise, if you don't have active insulin on board from a previous bolus, it can help there pre prevent the hypos. Where I found this week it's not been as effective is if I've over bolus in the first one to three hours, it's not going to prevent the hypo there. And, and also, if I'm exercising with quite a bit of active insulin on board, the suspending the basil is not going to have effect. So it's not the panacea, and it's going to solve every single hypo, but if 
you look at me there, from having 18 alarms per day down to five, and actually 14 hypo alerts per day down to one, and that is such a difference in my life just in one week. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing, really. So that's only after one week. So let's see how we go.